chapter six, section seven, intermolecular forces. And this one is a pretty challenging set of ideas to understand. So we're gonna look at three different types of intermolecular forces. The first one is, uh, well actually the first one we're gonna look at is dipole-dipole interactions. Then we're gonna look at hydrogen bonding. And thirdly, we'll look at London dispersion forces or van der Waals forces. Okay, so let's just define intermolecular forces first. It's the forces of attraction that occur between different neighboring molecules. Realize that intramolecular forces are the actual bonds within a molecule, and they are technically stronger than intermolecular forces. So here, the bond within the molecule is an intramolecular force, whereas the attraction between these two molecules is known as an intermolecular force. Inter is a prefix that means between. There are three different types of intermolecular forces. There's dipole-dipole forces, hydrogen bonding, and London dispersion forces, which are also known as van der Waals forces. We're going to start with dipole-dipole forces first. This force will only occur between polar molecules, which also means this only happens with covalent compounds. So we look at Lewis structures to decide whether or not they have a dipole-dipole force. So for example, everything on the left has no dipole-dipole forces which means none of these are polar. So all of these molecules on the left are not polar. The ones on the right hand side on the other hand have dipole forces and they are polar. So how can we tell by looking at a molecule whether or not it's polar or nonpolar and therefore either has or does not have dipole-dipole forces. How do we know if the molecule is polar? Well, let's talk about what makes the molecules on the right hand side polar because these are the ones that are polar and the ones on the left are not polar. So looking at the first molecule First of all, there are no lone pairs around the center atom. And the bonded atoms are identical. So because boron in the middle has no lone pairs, and because the three bonded atoms are the same, fluorine, fluorine, and fluorine, that means this is a nonpolar molecule. Same thing with CO2. If we look at this one, there are no lone pairs around the center, and it's surrounded by two oxygens, which happen to be identical. So this is a not, not a polar molecule. SF6. There are no lone pairs on the center, and all of these are fluorine. They're all the same. So that makes this not polar. And the last one, CCl4, there are no lone pairs on the center, and all four of the bonded atoms are chlorine, which are identical. So this one, again, is not polar. Let's look at the right side, the ones that are polar, if they have a lone pair on the center, then that makes it polar. Or if the bonded atoms are not identical, then it's going to be polar. So if we look at our first molecule, oxygen on the center does have two lone pairs. And so because it has the two lone pairs, that makes it a polar molecule. If we look at our second example, the carbon is surrounded by a hydrogen and a nitrogen. Those are not 
identical, and so this is a polar molecule. If I look at this third example, the chlorine has two lone pairs attached to the center, which is going to make this polar. And at the bottom, notice that my carbon has two chlorine atoms and two hydrogen atoms, which are not identical, which makes this one polar as well. So if a molecule is polar, then it does have dipole-dipole forces. So let's kind of practice this real quick. Which of the following molecule, molecule, molecules is polar and therefore has dipole-dipole forces? If you'd like to pause the video and then put a check or circle the ones that are polar and have dipole-dipole forces, then you can unpause it and check the answer. The following are polar. The first one, not polar, no dipole-dipole forces. The second one is polar, has dipole-dipole forces because we've got two hydrogens and an oxygen which are not identical, which makes this polar. This one is polar because there's a lone pair on the center. This one is not polar because there are no lone pairs on the center and all the oxygens are identical. This one is polar because we've got a lone pair on the center. And this one is not polar because there's no lone pair and all the chlorines are identical to each other. Hydrogen bonding is the attraction between the hydrogen of one molecule to the lone pair of its neighbor. So notice that my molecule on the left hand side, the hydrogen, is attracted to the oxygen on the neighboring molecule. And it's going to be because oxygen here has two lone pairs on it, because that's the, the Lewis structure of a water molecule. And so it's really attracted to the pairs of electrons as opposed to the oxygen itself. And so it's not a real bond. The word bond is a little bit misleading. It's really just the attraction between a hydrogen and a neighboring electronegative element. I want you to know that hydrogen bonding is a very strong force which causes high boiling points. It's because of hydrogen bonding that water has one of the highest boiling points on the planet, 100 degrees Celsius. A hydrogen must be bonded to one of the following for this force to be present. You either have to have a hydrogen and a nitrogen attached. So for example, NH3 is one molecule that could be that can have hydrogen bonding. The hydrogen has to be hooked to an oxygen, so H2O is an example. Or you have to have a hydrogen with a fluorine, like HF. So if a hydrogen is present, such as in all three of these, and it's bonded to an N, O, or an F, then it's possible to have label these as having hydrogen bonding. London dispersion forces is very simple. It's an attraction due to the constant motion of electrons. Since all atoms and molecules have moving electrons, then all atoms and molecules have this force. This is the only force that noble gases and nonpolar molecules have. And these are also called van der Waals forces. This is the weakest intermolecular force of all three of them. So um, you should know that forces and boiling points, the stronger the intermolecular force, the higher the boiling point. And so you can see in our chart here as an example, this one has hydrogen bonding. It also has um, London dispersion forces, and so it has a very high boiling point. The second one does not have hydrogen bonding, but it is polar, therefore it has dipole-dipole, and it has London dispersion, so it has a colder boiling point. And then as we go down the chart, they just get cooler and cooler, so they have weaker and weaker intermolecular forces between them. So once more, based on this chart, as we go up the chart, they have stronger forces, which means they have higher boiling points as we go up the chart. 